Hi, welcome to module five of short term course on computational chemistry. Hope you all have downloaded and installed Orca on your system. In last module, we learned how to put an executable file in our path, and also the procedure for submitting a job in Orca. In the present module, we learn how to create some simple input files for electronic structure calculation in Orca, and also, what are the files? We'll discuss that. What are the files generated on completion of an ORCA job? To verify if ORCA has been installed properly or not, simply type ORCA in the command line, enter. And if you get a message like, this program requires the name of a parameter file as argument, for example, ORCA test.inp. .inp is the extension name for an input file in Orca. If you get this message, that confirm that Orca is properly installed in your system. And also, the executable file is present in the correct path. But if you get message like Orca command not found, that means it has not been installed properly. So revisit my previous video, go through it carefully, and install it properly. Now, in order to submit job in Orca, you need a dedicated separate directory for Orca input file. And that's your best where you want to put that directory. Most probably, if you want to put, for example, if you want to put a directory in your, uh, on your desktop, you can use uh, operating system interface, simply do a right click and then go to new option and then folder and give a name to this particular folder. For example, I'm giving a name test. There's an alternate way to do that. Let me delete this folder. If I delete this, go back to the command line and then I'll navigate to the desktop. Let me see if desktop is available in my present working directory or not. What I'll do, I'll simply type dir, enter. It's not there. So I know that it's present in one right. So what I'll do, using command cd, change directory, I'll go to one right, enter. Now I again type dir directory. I can see that it's available in this present directory, that is desktop. So again, using cd command, I'll go to the desktop. And now I want to create a directory using the command line. So there's a command called make directory, mkdir, mkdir, that is make directory. And then I'll give the name of the directory which I want to generate. So let's again name this as test, enter. And you can see that again, we got that particular folder on our desktop. Now, create an input file and put that input file in this particular folder, also called your directory. Now, a typical input file in Orca is generated in a plain text format. Now, a plain text format can be created by any simple text editor. But most of the people have the choice of Notepad++. So I can use this Notepad++. Notepad++ is freely available. You can download. If I open this, and then in the file, let me name this. Save as, let me name this as, again, desktop, and then test folder. And let, me, let me name this as job1. See, now we have to do some entry into this. So make this a habit for reserving the first line as a comment line, just to indicate that what type of job you are performing. The comment line starts with a symbol hash. Whenever I put hash symbol, that means it's a comment line. Let me name this as 
my first single point energy calculation using urka so right now what i am doing i am you manually i am creating an input file just to give an idea about what are the basic requirement what are the ingredients which we are required to feed in an input file now a very important one the line which starts with the exclamation sign is the line for providing important keywords by default it is a single point energy if i want to do a single point energy calculation even if i don't mention anything or i can mention sp sp stands for single point or simply energy and then if i type rhf restricted heart rate fog methodology we are employing and it's compulsory that we have to provide information about what are the basis set you are going to provide so let me type this as sto that is slater type orbital which has been formed by the help of three gaussian function that's the simplest basis set available in this particular software we what we are doing we are mimicking a slater type orbital by the help of three gaussian function so this is basically a minimal basis set A detailed information about the basis set we we'll learn during our lecture theory lectures, and then so this we can have multiple exclamation lines. This is a simple syntax line. A more rigorous one is a block syntax that is required. for providing information about the geometry of the molecule also the charge what is what is the charge on that molecule its spin multiplicity so the block syntax starts with star then if i type xyz that means i'm using xyz cartesian coordinate for representing the geometry of the molecule for giving the position of the atom then i have to assign the charge if i put charge zero it means it's a neutral molecule and if all the electrons are paired so the multiplicity will be one so it's put one so this zero stands for the charge this one is the multiplicity spin multiplicity that is 2s plus 1 and then dedicate one line each for a particular atom so for example let me write the coordinate for carbon monoxide so putting carbon at the origin let the coordinate be 0 0 and 0 so we are putting carbon at the origin so one line each for a particular atom next line let's put oxygen and then let the along x axis the coordinate b is 0 along the y axis again 0 and we are putting oxygen along the z axis and the bond length between carbon and oxygen let for example it is 1.1 so that's the information in the cartesian coordinate we are providing about the geometry of the molecule the bond length is in angstrom by default and then close this by putting again a star this is the simplest job input file for calculating single point energy of carbon monoxide 
using a simple basis set that is Slater type orbital obtained by the help of three Gaussian function and the methodology is restricted Hartree-Fock method. Let's save this file. And we have saved that in, let's, let's close this. Just check it that it's, if it is available or not. Yeah, it's there. Now I have to submit this particular job. Again, I'll go to the command line. And then first I have to go to that particular directory. The directory is test directory, CD test. Let's check if this file is available or not. Simply type dir. Yes, that's there, job1.txt. So the input file can have an extension .imp as well as .txt. Now I have to submit a job using this particular input file. So what is the process, what is the method to do that? Simply type orca. Orca now becomes the command. Then space, the name of the input file, that is job1.txt space. Channel two that is greater than sign space again. Give a name to the output file required output file. So let name this again as job one dot out. So let me change this dot txt by out. Now if I press enter key, you see that something will start happening in this particular folder. Lots of temporary file will get created during the process. And once the job gets completed, you'll be left with few files there. So press enter. Yes, you can see that lots of temporary file is getting created, job done. Now this is the simplest procedure for just to check if the job got terminated correctly or not. In the output file, you can see that there's a file with an extension name out file. So if I open this, let's use again, open in a notepad. Now we'll discuss this in our next lecture, but let's go to the end of this file. And you'll be happy to see this line Orca terminated normally. So the job has been done. We'll discuss this particular file in our next lecture. Let's discuss more about the input file. So the previous input file we created manually. Now let's try to create the input file of a different molecule using Avogadro. So let's open Avogadro. And now in the build panel, let's create hydrogen peroxide. So from the element drop down menu, choose oxygen, click, click and drag. And then using auto optimization, clean up the molecule. That's an organic molecule. So use universal force field, click on the start button and very soon this molecule will be optimized using force field. Do remember to click the stop button. Now, I want to create input file for this particular molecule using Avogadro. So go to the extension menu, click on the extension menu. There's an option called Orca. Generate input, generate Orca input. Click on this. We'll get a window. Now, again, there's option for putting the comment line. Already there are some lines with the hash sign. So the line which starts with the hash is the comment line. So this is Avogadro generated Orca input file. You can have many comment lines there. Then we are using the basic mode. So this Avogadro provides two different modes, basic and advanced. Let's stick to the basic one. And then uh, you create uh, another comment line. So let's write 
what I'm doing, I'm doing the single point energy, single point energy calculation of hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide. So make this a habit of giving clear cut comment lines that what is this job is meant for. Now, there is another drop down menu. What type of calculation you want to do? You want to do single point energy or geometry optimization or frequency calculation? Let's stick to the single point energy. So that's why you can see that there's a keyword called SP. RHF stands for, by default, if it is RHF, it stands for restricted heart reflux method. So you can change this. If you want to change this name, then go to DFT method. So let's put DFT. Now, by default, there is a particular basis set. Now, we'll have a complete discussion later on on the type of basis set. This is a very special one. And one more thing at this juncture, I want to say that you must download from the Orca forum these two from the download category. One Orca manual, another Orca jump start guide. So when you download this Orca manual, and if you open this Orca manual, in the content section, if you go top, now in the contents, you'll find, so that's the manual, go down. So different categories there. So. It will take some time to get used to this particular manual. Now in the section, this is 6.3. There's a section called basis set. And if I click on the standard basis set library, these are the basis sets. In the previous one, we use this STO3. That's a minimal basis set from hydrogen to iodine. So these are the purple style basis set. Again, I said that we'll have a complete discussion on this later on. What is the polarizing function? What is the diffuse function? But by default, Orca used this particular basis set that is left to basis sets of curl through hydro. It's a more advanced one. So let's go back to our job. So you can choose if you want to change the basis set. I can make this basis set, just replace this by simply, let's do again that STO3G, I know that, STO3G. And let's remove this auxiliary one. Now do remember that this Orca input file are pretty much free format, capital or small. That means it's not case sensitive. This is a good thing because, and also uh, you can uh, put some blank lines. If you don't put that blank line also, there won't be any error. But in most of the, even in the paid software, you have to be very careful about the blank lines. You don't need to worry about this. Fortunately, you don't need to worry about this in Orca. And then, Look at that again, the block syntax. This is, since we have used this DFT, there's some function, we'll learn about this DFT later on, but these are the keywords we have to provide. But if I change to, again, Hartree Frog, let me do this, yes. Again, look at that basis set, it took that default def2. So I'll, I'll again replace this by STO3G. Let me make this as again capital. So it's a case, uh, it's not case sensitive. Now, let's have some discussion about this Cartesian, uh, this coordinate. Right now, H2O2, how many atoms? Four atoms. Three coordinate, XYZ coordinate for every atom. Total 12. So to describe H2O2, you require 12 coordinates. There's another way to describe the coordinates, and that is using 
bond length, bond angle, and dihedral angle called internal coordinates, and that we write in the form of Z matrix. Look at that again. By default, it went to that def two, but I am making that change. Internal coordinate. Now this internal coordinate is in the form of the first. This particular column is for bond length. This particular column is for the bond angle, and this one is for the dihedral angle. So what does that show? This oxygen is at the origin. You have put the oxygen at the origin. So right now there is no bond length, bond angle, dihedral angle. This is not X Y Z coordinate. This is information about bond length, bond angle, and dihedral angle. Now the another oxygen which is attached to the previous oxygen. So what it says, these three numbers say that this oxygen is linked to the first atom that is oxygen one. So with this first atom that is oxygen, it has a bond length of one point three one six angstrom. The distance between oxygen oxygen is one point three one six. Now, you can attach hydrogen to any one of them. So it shows that hydrogen attached to one of the oxygen, the bond length is point nine nine zero four four. The distance between H and one of the oxygen is point nine nine. Now, the angle between H O and O, that is, this H is. One and two show that it is attached actually to one of the oxygen, and now the second one is about the bond angle. So it is making an angle H O O, and that value is around 140 degree because that's sp3 hybridized, and then the lone pair issue is there. The last one, this hydrogen. Now, if this hydrogen is attached to one of the oxygen, this hydrogen will be attached to another oxygen. That's why look at that number two. Second is so this hydrogen attached on the oxygen bond is again around 0.99. The angle H O O is again around 104.5 degree. Now there are four atoms now in one sequence there, so it will have a dihedral angle. So dihedral angle H O O H is 180 degree. Now the very important point. If it was Cartesian coordinate, four atoms, total number of coordinates required are four into three twelve. But if it is internal coordinate, this format is called Z matrix format. The total number of coordinates will be three n minus six. Six redundant coordinates happens because. We know that translation, arbitrary translation or rotation, will not change the bond length, bond angle, and dihedral angle. Relative position of atoms will not change with translation and rotation. So total degrees of freedom in internal coordinate will be three n minus six. N is number of atoms. Out of three n minus six, n minus one will be the bond length. So if I have four atoms, n minus one is three. So three bond lengths. N minus two will be the angle. So there are four atoms. So N minus two, two minus two, there are two bond angles. And N minus three dihedral angle. So that's a general thing. Every for that will be applicable for each and every molecule. Out of three N minus six, N minus one bond length, N minus two bond angle, and N minus three dihedral angles. If I sum N minus one plus N minus two plus N minus three, it will be three N minus six. Three N was for the Cartesian coordinate. Three N minus six for the internal coordinate. The same thing. You can also do it in more compact form. Z matrix compact form. The same thing. For one oxygen, they haven't done anything. Another one is attached to that oxygen by the length one point three one, and this H length and bond angle, and this H length bond angle and dihedral angle. So now we know how to generate an input file. So simply, if I click on this generate, you have to provide the folder to which in which you want to put this particular input file. So, for example, I'm putting that in desktop, and then again in the test, and then if I write this as job two, job two, and then save. 
let me close this go back to this folder sorry job 2 i made on the desktop there that's why they should be if i put that in this particular folder test now i'll go to the command line we are already in the test directory let me check if that file is there or not i'll type dir yes it's there job 2 now look at the input file the abacad row when it creates input file it make the extension name .int so input file can have an extension name .int as well as .txt so job 2 .int now what i'll do i will open this particular folder keep it side by side just to see that once i run this job is there any creation of temporary file or not temporary file has information about the integrals and uh, uh, density matrix and all those things and then fork operator so now what is the command orca space the name of the input file so it took the mother one job one because preference will give it to one rather than two so if i make it two and then put the tab So job two dot imp space greater than sign that is channel two space then again job two and then change the name extension should be out o u t and then click enter so it's run and you can see that look at that temporary files are getting generated and once the job got completed all the temporary file Got vanished, and you are left with few output files. So that's in this particular video. In the next video, we'll discuss some specific problem, and also we'll discuss go through the output files. So let's end this lecture here.